got um, snow in the forecast, so there's plenty of moisture. The moisture we've been praying for is coming. Um, some people are probably want to pray that it'll stop, but we are so glad that uh, we, we're not uh, dealing with dust right now. It is great to have some visitors. Hopefully we'll come back always. Jimmy's here, and Jimmy is fixing up the house across the street, and he's coming to church, a double bonus. So glad to have you with us, and we appreciate that. And Diana and Quinton are here from Minneapolis, and we're so glad to have you with us today. So thank you for coming and sharing and worshiping with us. It is uh, a joy to be able to, to worship together. I don't know if you can read this. It kind of came out faded on our printer, but we have come to worship him, and that's what we're here for. So we're going to worship his majesty, but we've got to make sure we get all the announcements covered. Any announcements coming up? Any birthdays or anniversaries? So uh, we're just going to worship, go right into worship, and worship his majesty. What a wonderful thing to do. 176 in the handbook. Oh God, we worship you and we thank you for your presence here among us. We know that you follow us all around and are with us every day, but sometimes we forget to acknowledge you and to spend time with you. So I pray that we would be able to set aside those things of the world and really enjoy and savor your presence and that together we would Show the love that you have given us. Help us now as we read the scriptures, as we sing the songs. Speak to our hearts and help us to, to make changes that we need to make to be your children here on, on this earth. 
Thank you for all you're going to do. We pray for your Holy Spirit to fill us during this time. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our psalm is 72. And we're just going to read the first 14 verses of that. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. May he judge over your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people in the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor and the needy. Give deliverance to the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls upon the mowing grass, like the showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him. May his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all the kings fall down before him, and all nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy, and saves the lives of the needy. From the oppression and the violence, he redeems their life. Precious is their blood in his sight. Amen. What a wonderful description of the we <coughs> serve. And now, our, uh, by the way, our, um, our theme for today is action stars. So whatever that may mean to you, we'll talk about that later, but it's, it goes throughout our scriptures today. And um, we're going to sing, We Are the Church, 558. First three verses. <laughs> we are the church, Christ's Arise, 
Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord shall rise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. The nations shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried at your side. Then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be coveted you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover your land. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and shall bear good news of the praises of the Lord. <coughs> so there was action there that we see, and we know that there's more action to come as we read the scriptures. Um, our next hymn is 526, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It's in your hymn book, verses 1 and 2.
And this is this is something else. Monday I Monday I didn't know what in the world. Somebody was on on the car and he would stay there at any place. So I went there Monday night and found the water was shirting off. And so I didn't know what in the world was happening. So I have been weeks where I had some stuff with the water and everything. You have to wait around for a guy to come around and check the uh, tables. They didn't do that on Friday. And so something, it was kind of nice then because I prayed that day. And suddenly, as I was praying there, they, that man came in and put, put the uh, people to check for the tables and uh, everything like this. And I pray that they'll get everything right today and that uh, those things will go, go right with that. So let's pray. There's two things here. Let's pray for your water situation. I saw the truck out there. Um, pray for water uh, for Ed, and then we'll pray for his family. Um, for the situation with Ed and his water in his house, pray that you would bring this in, make this work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for Sandy and Carolyn, who are uh, having health issues and want to be able to get around and do it, be as independent as they can, and we need healing for uh, Carolyn and for Sandy. Uh, could I mention somebody else, Carolyn Weinbrenner, and her eyes, and I think her husband needs to be prayed for too, because he has to take her around all the places. And I don't know yeah. All right, we'll take care of that one next. Let's pray for uh, Carolyn and Sandy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let's pray for Carolyn and Ed for their healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I know the prayer changes things. Thank you, Ed. Yes. I'd like to pray for all the chaos workers that are going to be out in this next storm. Yeah, so let's pray for those that have to be out in the storm and those that are grateful for those who keep our roads clean and who watch over us and keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thanks for the moisture. Yes, let's give thanks for the moisture, especially those who have, have suffered through dry uh, years. It looks like we've got at least enough to get us through the winter. Uh, grateful for moisture, for the pastures, and for the wheat fields. For the moisture, we receive the abundant moisture. Lord, in your mercy, hear our praise and thanks. Yes? Um, just that we could have a good start to the school year um, and the students would come and feel the love of God and, and learn at the same time. And so many friends of mine have had bad medical diagnosis and just, you know, the general junk that's going around, just so much healing that needs to come. So, so healing for the for friends that uh, are people generally in the community that are having trouble with health issues, and um, some that are viruses, and some are just things that go wrong with our systems. So we need prayer for that, and then uh, we'll pray after that for the, the kids coming back to get a positive attitude, learn all that they can, and look forward to the school year, and, and learn the things they need to learn. So first of all, for those in the community, and especially in the the ones that body knows that are, are hurting and need healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And then for the children who are coming back to school and needing, um, needing to learn and needing to feel love and needing to, to know the things that they need to know to be successful in life. So let's pray for the students as they come back. Good attitude for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. One more. Most yep. uh, diabetes is flaring up, so. That... so. So, what was that? Mom's diabetes is flaring up. Oh, for, um, for Jimmy's mom, that she would, Carol, that she would have uh, for diabetes, that she would have a calm back down and that she would uh, find healing. So for Carol, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Anything else? You can use the prayer, you can listen. 
to see me preach. You could rather pray. I would like to say I got back from driving the wrestling kids yesterday and sat down to watch the NFL game last night. And there's an extraordinary kid that's going to be the rookie of the year in the NFL, C.J. Stroud, I believe is his name. And he is the most amazing young Christian I think has come along since probably Kurt Warner. He is using his success to preach the gospel in every way that he can. And I think we looked him up this morning because I was telling Molly the extraordinary game he played last night and a tremendous throw. He's probably 22 years old, made these miraculous throws, and they trained the camera on him as soon as the game was over. And Tears were streaming down his eyes, and he was giving all the praise and glory to the Savior Jesus Christ, and speaks boldly the gospel. And, and Bonnie was reading to me, and she looked him up this morning. He has something like 500,000 people. Is that what it is? 550,000 followers on Instagram. He's using this platform to spread the gospel as far as he possibly can. Just, Amazing how God raises up when our society is trying to silence Christians in every way they can. And here God raises up this extraordinary young man with unbelievable physical talents and gives him a voice to more people than, you know, any preacher is able to reach in this nation. It was just, it was just fun to watch him succeed and so calm under pressure because... He's not playing for his own glory. He's using the talents that God gave him to bring the glory to Jesus Christ. It's Amen. an extraordinary thing. Well, I'm he, sure he needs our prayers because you can imagine the opposition that he's going to have with his success. And you know, when I talk about action stars, he's one of them. Yes. <laughs> all right, let's uh, give, first of all, uh, praise and thanks for God's uh, being. God being uh, glorified through this man, this young man, and then also let's pray for him because of the trials he's going to face because of his, his uh, faith and just because he lives in a world that is falling all around him. Um, so for this CJ, this young man who's sharing his, the gospel boldly, Lord, in your mercy, hear our praise and prayer. Anything else? Yes. Yes. So one more football player would be my grandson here. <laughs> he, I saw him this week and he's just totally exhausted. I don't think that people realize how much work it is to, to do what these kids are doing. Uh, so, so Jared playing for Oklahoma and uh, you know that's no small task just getting to be there and then to have to put up with the amount of practice and then, um, I mean, it is a total commitment, more than a full-time job. He's a Christian and witnesses also, so. Wow, that is so wonderful. I know he's, I knew he would he attended church. I didn't know he was bold about his witness. That is wonderful. Another example of God working through people to bring his glory and also to help the people. Let's give thanks for that and prayers also for him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our praise and prayers. It's wonderful. So good. I like it when we share the good and the, and the prayer requests and the, the, how God is working because God is working day to day. And we hear about these wonderful people, these wonderful young people who are witnesses. And we have that same opportunity to share the gospel. And we need God's strength to be able to do that in this world. Anything else? It's great to talk. It's the meeting of the people that is that is the church. Well, let's go ahead and sing our prayer again. I know you have other prayer requests that you want to talk to God about. And we'll have time to have a prayer again for you to talk privately in your heart. Also, if you have not gone through the steps uh, of receiving Jesus as your Savior, the time to talk to Him about that. And then also uh, keeping your house clean if you're a Christian, 
make sure you keep your house clean, that you repent of your sins as they come along, and uh, keep following God, because that's the only way to experience the joy of His presence, is to keep our, our inner temple open to the Holy Spirit. So our song is found in your faith we sing book. It's 2159, Jesus, Draw Me Close. <laughs> God, we worship you and we continue focusing upon you because we know that we need you every day and every hour. I pray that you would bless those that are here, that you would bring healing and peace to anyone that's in this congregation and anyone who's in our congregation but not able to make it, that you would pour out your love upon those here and those who look to you. We pray for those in our community who are suffering from um, illnesses or injuries or diseases, and also those who are suffering from spiritual injury and, and spiritual hurts. We pray that you would bring your healing to them. We pray that your Holy Spirit would bring joy and light in, into the time of pain and darkness. We pray also for Luann Insko and for her family with the loss of Heather, we pray that you would comfort them at this time. We know that they're hurting. We pray that your light would shine in their hearts at this time and bring them joy even in the midst of their sorrow and mourning. We pray for our leadership. We pray for those who lead our county and city. We thank you for their work. We pray that you would guide them. Help them to lead us in a way that honors you. We pray for our state and federal government. We pray that you would be with those who have been elected and those who have been appointed, that they would follow your commands, that you would guide them and that they would um, listen to you. Thank you for those who are willing to make a firm stand for you in government. I pray that you would continue to bless them and guide them, keep them safe. We thank you for our military and those who protect our nation. We pray that you would bless them and keep them safe and healthy. Those who protect our borders, we pray that you would bless them and keep them safe and healthy, protect them and their families. We thank you that there are people willing to risk their lives to protect us. We thank you for those who protect us locally, for those who are working on the highways to keep them clean, for those who keep our utilities running. For those who are law enforcement and protect us, and for those who are firefighters and the EMS service, I pray that you would bless them all, keep them safe and healthy, and protect them as they protect us, protect our families, provide for them. I pray for our farmers and ranchers who raise the food for us. I pray that you would bless them and provide for their needs and provide for the needs of their livestock. 
We pray also for the truckers that, and uh, delivery services that bring our goods to us. I pray that you would bless them, keep them safe on the highways, especially during the times of storm that we're looking at. Thank you for our schools. I pray that you would bless every teacher and every staff member. Keep them safe and, and healthy and protect them and guide them during these difficult times and give them the strength that they need to, to face the issues and face the problems that are here and give them joy in their service. I pray for the students, most of all, that they would learn what they need to learn to be successful and find joy even with all of the complications that we have in our society today, that they would learn the most important things, and especially about you, as we've heard of several ex examples of young people who are wanting to serve you and, and share the gospel, even among your friends. Thank you for those who are missionaries. I pray that you bless them, keep them safe and healthy, and protect them and provide for their needs. We pray for those who are persecuted for the faith in Jesus Christ around the world. We pray that you would bless them and provide for them and their families. And during their times of trial and persecution, that you give them endurance and strength and perseverance. Thank you for those who are serving in our hospitals around the country. I pray that you would help them with staff needs that they may have. Bless those who are Blessing others, I pray that you would help them to deal with the regulations that they face and the staff shortages. We pray for the patients uh, in the care homes and in the hospitals that you bring healing to them and comfort and peace and, and the joy of your presence. We pray for those who are incarcerated. We ask that you would bless them and speak to them and help them to be reconciled to you and to their families and to their communities. Now as we focus upon you in this prayer, we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you'd like to give an offering, there is a blue basket at the back. You can get put the offering in. <laughs>
Herod the king, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where Christ should be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, Bethlehem and the land of Judah, are, not, are no longer least among the princes of Judah. For out of you shall come a governor, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, carefully inquired of them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, so that I may come and worship him also. Now when they heard the king, they departed. And the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, until it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great excitement. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child and Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But being warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Jenna, for your reading, and thank you, Gail, for your playing as always. And um, this is exciting when you read about the, the prophecies of the Old Testament in Isaiah and even the Psalms about our King that is to come, and how wonderful He is, and how much He loves us, how much He loves those who are struggling. And it is our our job to be the body of Christ right now. And to, to not just look to him and say, what a great God we serve, but also to live out the life that he's called us to live. And it's great that we, we saw personal examples, and we heard about personal examples today in the prayers, of those who are action stars. In other words, if you, there's someone that people look up to, and they're people of action, good actions. Not just Bad actions, like we see Herod doing. Not people who bring glory to themselves, but people who bring glory to God. Isaiah wrote in a dark time, when things looked like there was no hope. Can you imagine the faith he must have had to be able to write these words down that he heard from God, that there was going to be a time when everyone was going to be gathered back and they were going to be wealthy again? didn't look that way. They were surrounded. And it, it was looking like Babylon was going to consume everything. And not only that, but their own leaders were not following God. So how is there any hope? Isaiah gave them hope, and I think that as far as Isaiah can see, just like many of us can only see what is going to happen in the United States in the near future and worried about that, Isaiah can see beyond that. And maybe he was thinking about the prophecy of when Babylon would, uh, would fall and the Persian Empire would allow the people to come back to Judah after the captivity. And there was some, as we talked about, some minor fulfillment of the scriptures in that, that they came back to Jerusalem, but it was never the powerhouse like it's talking about here. It's going to shine in the darkness. When we look at these um, stories, out of the Bible that speak to us and speak to our heart. We are often comparing those times to these times when we see darkness all around us. And it's easy to give up in despair. I've heard people talk about, oh, I don't know what's going to happen with, uh, with these times. It's, they're awful. And they are. There is awful things going on. I'm reading, I love to read uh, biographies. Little minor miracle. I've been looking for the book. <clears throat> On, uh, I've, looked, I've been looking at presidents and, and political figures in the United States and also in England and, and trying to put all the history together uh, in context because they, they talk to one another. And the one that I was reading about, that I'm reading about now, is Truman. Harry S. Truman 
didn't know much about him, and, but there was a real big autobiography, and I was looking for it. The library didn't have it. And I've been looking at bookstores for it, and they didn't have it. And so I walk into Culver Flea Market. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> and so he's got a thousand, ten thousand books maybe in boxes, and, and I thought, well, I'll look through these. So Jim takes me back there, and I look on the shelf right there is a big, the big, thick biography of Harry S. Truman for $2. And Carol said, well, I don't want to mark those down. I've got to go somewhere else. So I'll pay the two bucks. And then right next to it was Thomas Jefferson, who was going to be on my list somewhere else. But anyway, you read about the times that they went through, and Harry S. Truman, um, it, you learn, one of the things about biography is you learn about the era. If they do a good biography, it doesn't just talk about that person. And Harry S. Truman had his time, by the way, his S didn't stand for anything. It just has. They said that was a custom of those days. It was kind of a surprise to me. They, they uh, said it could be either of the grandparents. But, but the amazing thing is that he lived during difficult times. And he shined as a star at times. He was, I didn't know he was in the artillery in World War I. Maybe Quentin knows all about it. Yeah, I'm sure that he's, the, you and Tom, all these history buffs in here. So i got to tread carefully that I don't go off path. But what was amazing to me was the awful things that they went through. He didn't have an easy time throughout his, his life. And for whatever else he was, he tried to hold a high moral center. They, the author placed him as back in the 1800s and almost chivalrous in his beliefs. And he, he dealt, dealt with some shady characters, if you know the Pendergast story. But he was always trying to help the, the people, and he, he failed visibly sometimes, sometimes he did some good things. But just to learn about Aaron, how awful it was during the Depression for those farmers that already were struggling and then they had nothing. And uh, to read about the corruption that was in our government even then, and uh, things that were going on. So they lived through terrible times there, too. And it as we look to today, we see the possibilities of all the things falling apart. If we put our hope in the things of this world, we'll be in trouble. But as we put our hope in that star, the morning star, Jesus, then things turn around for us. So we come to the wise men, and that story, I mean, sometimes we talk more about the wise men because there isn't really much said about them. They're men of the East, um, Magi, they're called. And sometimes we try to make a whole big glorious story about them. But there really isn't much in the scripture, and a lot of it is speculation. Why they came, why they knew there was a king of the Jews. But the point is that they knew that there was to be a star. And they knew that it was to guide them to the king of the Jews. And so they looked for that star. And that star gave them hope. And the star led them to Jesus. There was a bright and shining star that led them to Jesus. But they had to be looking for it. And part of the problem that we face in the world is people aren't looking in the right places for what's going to fix their problems. They're looking for maybe the government to fix their problems. And we know historically that hasn't worked very well. They're looking maybe for their friends or maybe for someone that's wealthy. Maybe they're looking to win the lottery to solve their problems. But Jesus is the star we look to. And here it's a star that led to his, his cradle. Maybe led to him as a young person. There's a disagreement. You know, and, I, and as I read it, as we read last week, they said they went to Nazareth. Uh, shortly after the, their experience in the temple, and then they said they came to Bethlehem here, so I kind of place it pretty close to the nativity. But however it is, it was a star that they followed. A little miracle of electricity worked out of that. <laughs> Didn't blow up a fuse. And the star was shining. And they looked to the light. They looked 
what God had for them. Somehow they had learned that there was a Christ child. There was a king of the Jews that was to be born. They didn't probably have an evangelist or a prophet there. Maybe they did. But they took the light that was given them and they responded to us. Responded to it. Those of us who look to the, to the stars that, that we may see in our world that point us to Jesus need to follow what they say if it's true and following and headed towards Jesus, not towards themselves. Also, he's called us to be the light of the world. He's called us to be those stars that shine in the darkness. Many of, many of us are set in environments that aren't the easiest environments to live in. He's called us to be a witness and to be a light to the world. Not just by our, um, just because we're so good at knowing the gospel and knowing God, but it, remember it said by your works, people will know that you are the light and glorify God. They won't look to you as the original light, but look to the light that is shining through you from Jesus. Remember he said that you are the light of the world in, in the Sermon on the Mount, and that people may see your good works and glorify God. So that is the whole purpose of this, and that is something you can do today, something we can do every day, is glorify God no matter what's going on in this world. And we can pray that God will change this world and people will look to the light because we win people to Jesus, not in big groups, as evangelists sometimes do, but for the most part, it's one customer at a time. So let's ask God to someone that we might be a light to, someone we might help out, and someone that we might point, help point to Jesus, who is our God and King right now. And someday He will be King over all the world. But right now he's just king in the hearts of those who follow him. So let's let Jesus be our king, let him be our guide, and let's respond and be his children and bring life into the world. Amen. Closing him is found in your hymn book. It is Blessed Assurance. 369 verses 1 and 2.
to wait in you. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God the Father, may the power of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>